So now that we're talking so much about stress, please tell me about stress and how it impacts the hormones. See, stress is basically nothing but negative chemicals. Mm. And it is linked to a system in our body called inflammation Correct. or anger. And we generate chemicals which are called cytokines. They are all these negative chemicals like the interleukins of the world, the yes. interferons of the world. Yes. And they actually go and generate inflammation which damage tissues of our body. Yes. The small little cells of our body get damaged, organs get damaged and you get diseases. Yes. So actually that is why we need to de-stress ourselves. And therefore it's important, stress can be of different types. You could have mental stress, you could have physical stress or you could have both. And unfortunately we land up with both. So it's important to recognize that in stress, it is not just mental stress when we talk of stress. It is mental and physical stress both. And offloading ourselves from the stress by either dietary measures or physical activity measures or sleep or even supplements sometimes. They can be very de-stressing. And you know, some of our old uh, herbal uh, you know, ingredients or our natural foods you know, in, in our uh, Ayurveda, it is said, there are sattvic foods, tamasic food and rajasic foods. So, you know, rajasic are the rich foods, rich foods, so all these Raja Maharajas used to eat. And then, of course, tamasic are the angry food, these the savouries, the, the, the spices and all that. And then, of course, you have the sattvic food, Nothing. which is which is actually not the bland foods. You know, hmm. people have this, this yeah. gen Z have, you know, the sattvic food is actually healthy food. It can be tasty and healthy too. And it could have small little spices, small little tadkas, a small little herbs, which can actually rejuvenate you. Hmm. They actually can be the elixirs of youth. Hmm. So remember sattvic food with some sattvic exercise, hmm. with some positivity is equally important. See, outcomes when we study in modern biology or health is not just health outcomes. It's also happiness outcomes. There's no point for me to give 20 pills, give a diet prescription and, you know, the person there is anxious. Yeah. I will never good, get good outcomes. True. Unless and until we change the happiness quotient of that individual and put that person at ease, yeah. you will continue generating negativity. Yeah. So, I think, as I said, there are ways of looking at it. Rashmi, when I see people from your clinic which come, uh, I see that you are not a person who tells them that you have a problem. You tell them that this is a solution to the problem. Yeah. So we should be solution providers and not problem creators. <laughs> True. You know, that's the way to look at it. And endocrinology or skin health or endocrine science or skin science, it is very important to recognize that we solve problems and address issues in a very positive way rather than being saying that we are overburdened and you have PCOD, you have prolactin, you have this, you have that, you have brain tumor. They get psyched. Yeah. And then they go on that poor Google, WhatsApp, university and they get further psyched. Yeah. So, first thing you tell them is there is nothing to worry. Nothing to worry, yeah. Everything is manageable and give them that hope but tell them that you need to get a discipline on board and you need to do a couple of things to put your house in order and you are going to be just like a normal person. What does cortisol do to the skin and hair? Cortisol actually is a hormone which we need every day to fight small little things hmm. or adversities. Hmm. So when you suddenly get a jerk, you know, or you are about to fall, it's your cortisol which will Positive. activate your muscles which will help you. Hmm. So it's actually a protective hormone. Hmm. But what happens is when it gets overprotected, it hurts you. Hmm. So what's happening is when you burn yourself out, the cortisol creates negative energy. Hmm. And it creates a negative nitrogen balance. Mm. And then makes you crave more food, eat more, put on weight. And then it starts in negative circuitry in our body. So our neurochemistry and our entire body's endocrine chemistry gets distracted. Mm. And rarely, of course, we get diseases of excess cortisol. Either because we are giving cortisol from outside or we are yeah. making it from inside, yeah. which is Cushing's. But that's rare. That's rare. But, but it's important to recognize that our day-to-day See, we have to go, what is yoga doing? Yoga is making us parasympathetic. Yes. And we are sympathetic. sympathetic. Sympathetic is all about cortisol and catecholamines and adrenaline and noradrenaline and all that. So, it's very, very important to recognize that calming down is, is a way of life. Hmm. We are too much in a hurry. Hmm. You know? And this hurry, worry kills. So, don't worry, don't hurry. 
and if you want to calm down it is taming your cortisol correct and i think cortisol taming is very important and for that i think you know way of life changing is very important conversations and giving hope mm. and engaging people is equally important in healing as much as giving medications or supplements or yoga or diet yeah so true so basically cortisol is what is secreted when you are in stress but if you keep getting stressed throughout the day little 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 bit of cortisol keeps secreting and that becomes excessive cortisol which like shashank rightly said is going to accumulate make you put on more weight that can end up causing metabolic syndrome insulin resistance maybe leading to pcos all of this ends up causing then acne hair fall irritated skin angry skin and you know pigmentation in the body folds all of this will happen so most importantly you need to understand stress leads to whole load of things and couple of easy things to actually reduce stress like dr shashank said is physical exercise because that leads to some happy hormones eating the right food at the right time and sleeping well along with being happy now just coming to sleeping well how important is sleep and when i say sleep i'm but i sleep 6 hours when do you go to sleep 2 am in the morning i sleep and 2 am in the afternoon i get up i'm like no you need to sleep at a certain hour have a restful sleep wake up at a certain hour so please from the horse's mouth so we run the indian society of chrono medicine and rashmi i invite you to join the society chrono medicine is a society of biological clock so our biological clock you know, you know i appreciate that you sleep at 10 o'clock and get up at 5 o'clock which is the biological clock of the human body if you disrupt that clock you will get clock disruption and then the right amount of hormones won't be secreted so duration of sleep should be not less than 5 hours not more than 10 hours 7 hours is optimal you should not snore at all and preferably sleep on time preferably sleep at the same time every day plus or minus half an hour is okay but i think that is how it is and if you then disrupt your clock metabolism then you know you need to sometimes like you know people who are healthcare workers or people who are airline pilots or who are in shift jobs then we have to give them supplements to reset their biological clock because you know when the biological clocks get disrupted you get accidents they can be accidents of human body which cause diseases or they actually can cause accidents on the road so you know lot of accidents occur in the morning from 4 to 6 am because of the clock disruption so i think biological clock is very important sleeping on time eating on time sleeping adequately sleeping sufficiently without snoring is equally important and healthy sleep is very crucial so doing a sleep study is very important because if you do a sleep study sometimes you have to put a cpap and that cpap actually can be a game changer blood pressure can come to normal pcos can get cured there is nothing wrong and don't be ashamed of talking about sleep health to your doctor yeah so assistance of sleep through a supplement is also a wise thing to do absolutely for some time for them to absolutely. get back and, to their sleep and most circadian supplements rhythm. rashmi you should know uh, are not sleeping pills you have a lot of indigenous herbs which actually can uh, you know uh, you know they can make you sleep well they have tryptophan which makes melatonin and they have a lot of these uh, indigenous herbs which actually can help you i so have you seen magnesium well. and magnesium and many others so i as i said that many of them actually can give you good quality of sleep so you know for me the formula is very simple you know i first tell them to have a pinch of nutmeg hmm. if it doesn't put you to sleep take a little bit of magnesium if it doesn't put you to sleep take a little bit of melatonin if it doesn't put put you to sleep then maybe take the formula you are giving and any of that is Rest okay well. okay hmm. and then after that you can look at undergoing a medication so mm. i think sleep hygiene is very important. and do's and don'ts of sleep are equally important light of the night in your bedroom is equally important you know they say red light is the best light or no light is the best light so basically circadian rhythm is super important for us not just about eating sleeping on time the eating and sleeping of time is also going to discipline your hormones to release at a certain time therefore the whole function of the body 